Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover the Raptors, and these are ones that have been requested a couple of times. Uh, that sort of matte green look, very sort of modern military, and it really suits, I think, the Primaris Marines. Uh, this is one I don't know a great deal about the chapter themselves, so you guys are going to have to fill in the blanks. <laughs> I had to look up a couple of color charts, actually. But if you do know these guys and you want to see how I would go ahead and paint their armor, hey, nice and simple. As always, this is going to feature a dry brush and a shade, so without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to begin with, I've primed this guy with a couple of light sprays of Death Guard Green from the can. What I've done then is gone over the top with just a thin coat of Death Guard Green from the pot. Reason being is any little areas that you might have missed, you know, you do want to make sure that you're getting a nice solid color. And if you do need to go back later and patch up any of the colors, any discrepancies between sort of primer and then whatever you paint over the top is going to be very visible. So I find it's quite handy ordinarily, even if you are priming with a certain color, just to give it one shot of the, let's say, correct color from the pot. What we'll do next though is get out my little dry brush. Uh, any old dry brush will work for this. Uh, smaller and softer, I would suggest, are going to be better. We're going to use Underhive Ash. And this one, I like this more than Nurgling Green because Nurgling Green is quite green. And uh, we actually want to avoid adding too much green to this guy at this stage. So I'm going to prep up my dry brush in the normal way. So a little bit of dry paint in the bristles. And what we'll do is lightly dry brush the edge of the base. You see, we're not leaving very much behind there. I might have taken too much off. So let's just add a little more. And we can try that again. Better. All right. What I'm going to do now is just lightly flick along all the areas that I want to have that highlight. Don't worry too much if you catch any areas that are going to be, you know, rounded edges like his knee pads or the ends of his boots, for example because we are going to do something later which will tidy that up a bit and they won't look quite so chalky. So take your time and this is one of those stages if you have a smaller brush and you kind of take your time with it you can quite easily fake out that cool highlight effect. So around we go. This will probably take well, about five six minutes. We'll see what we get once I've finished adding these highlights. And after a couple of passes, this is what we've got. You'll see in some areas it has gone a little bit chalky, but that's kind of to be expected. We are dry brushing after all. My big recommendation is that you don't have too much paint on your brush. This has taken two or three passes with the brush in some areas to get that nice itch. If you have too much on your brush when you go ahead and, you know, first apply the paint, it's going to go everywhere. You're going to get big, horrible streaks. You will not get that effect. So take your time. Like I always say, less paint where you need to add more is always better than too much paint where you've got to start over. So what we'll do now to get rid of some of that uh, chalkiness rather is use a shade. And for this, I've got a Thonian camo shade, giving this a really good shake. And you'll see now why we didn't want something like Nurgling Green, because when we go ahead and put this on, this is going to look, it's that cool modern military sort of green. So what we'll do is go over the whole model, just bathe the whole thing in your Ethonian camo shade, make sure you're working it into the recesses, and then give it about 20 minutes, half an hour to dry. Now as you can see, once that's dried, what a big difference that makes. We've got a little bit of highlighting and we've got that nice deep shading which really helps sell the green of the armor. Uh, I quite like that effect. I think that works rather well. And for our kind of, you know, again, modern military green, this works, I think, quite nicely on Space Marines. What we'll do now is we're going to do the Bone uh, Chest Eagle. For this, I've got Rakarth Flesh and just a little bit of water in there with my medium layer brush. Let's turn them upside down because a lot of you ask, oh, how do you get to the Chest Eagle? And honestly, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> let's move them around some. So let's get in from this angle. And you will no doubt find this easier without a camera to worry about. But just take your time, put on a layer of this over all of the chest eagle. You might find on the other side, it's easier to come at it from this angle. 
Don't worry too much if you do end up hitting the uh, bolter. The only thing you really don't want to get is the green armor at this stage. So the bolter's fair game because we're going to paint it a different color later. Now once that's dried, I'm going to add a little bit of Seraphim Sepia. I'm still using my medium layer brush. If you do want a darker bone, like you want quite a sort of grim, ghastly looking bone, <laughs> Agrax Earthshade would work here well instead. But I think just a little bit of warmth is going to help offset some of this color. And now moving down to my small layer brush. Uh, I'm going to go with a little bit of Shabti Bone. And don't worry if you don't, you know, you don't have to do every single, you know, line on this. All you need to do is just lightly flick along the very edges of those feathers and sort of create the impression that the whole thing is painted. Don't worry if it's not perfect. You know, even here along the... Oops, I'm hitting the bottom wall there. <laughs> uh, just flick the edges of the wings and you'll get a nice enough effect. Now once those little flickies along the edge of the Aquila are done, that's really the armor finished. So what I'm going to do now is just very quickly go ahead and finish the rest of the marine. I've done this in a few videos, so what I'd suggest is, you know, go ahead and just copy some of the, uh, the paint suggestions from those. I particularly like the Crimson Fist video, I think that's one of my favorites <laughs> as far as painting marines goes. But let's quickly finish this dude off and have a look at what he looks like with that armor all in context. And then through the magic of television, <laughs> our marine is finished. And as you can see, once all the other details are on, there's actually not that many of them on the Raptors. Uh, it seems like they're really quite a flat color scheme and I kind of like it. It does suit the look that they're going for, I think. Obviously you could find yourself a chapter badge, um, search online for decals or something similar. Uh, I know some places will do 3D printed versions of that Raptor badge, which are then much easier to paint than freehanding. Um, or you could <laughs> be brave and give that a shot yourself. I've never been one to be that bold though, so eh, your results may vary. So shout out again to Exit23 Games uh, for their very generous contribution of the audio and visual equipment. Massive difference it makes to this. And as ever guys, if you have any questions, feel free to drop in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.